Is this the produce aisle or have I stumbled upon the Garden of Eden? Because you look like you could tempt anyone with your charm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, do you do you come with a nutritional label? Because I'm sure you're packed with all the essential ingredients for a heartwarming connection. <laughs> that made us so much better. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you a shopping cart? Because I can't help but feel like we're destined to stroll down the aisles of life together. I must be in the bakery section because you're quite the sweet treat I wouldn't mind indulging in. Do you have a recipe? I gotta say, any males listening to this, do not use that last one. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's like creepy grandpa right there. Yeah, that is. That was was very forward. (laughs) Hi, Shan- is it Chantel or Chantal? <laughs> Any way you want to say it, I never complain. Say Chantel. Yes. So you might be wondering why you're here with me today, because I, I, I'm a dating and relationship coach, and I want to tell the people who are listening right now, you have struck my nerd nerve. <laughs> yeah. Saw you on TikTok, you know the one, and you're talking about Chat GPT. And you said, and I'm I'm gonna paraphrase, but I'm gonna let you tell the story. But you basically uploaded yourself mm-hmm. to Chat GPT. And then you said, and I'll let you I'll let you tell us the question you asked it to help you with, because I'm 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 invested in this. This is a journey that you set out on, and I'm catching you at the beginning of this journey. And man, if you're going to go down this, I want to follow along. And I I want to bring people along with this because Mm -hmm. I'm a huge nerd. ChatGPT is like the next generation of technology. Now, I'm 50 years old, and there's this phenomenon that happens as you age. Caleb, how old are you? 27. Yeah. So there's... So there's a phenomenon that happens as you age. And it's kind of like you 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 sort of get stuck. Like the the music and the technology, there's a point where you're like, I'm not interested in more. I'm not interested in absorbing more, right? So the music that we like at 50, it's we're not usually for the most part, we're not picking up new artists at this point that we want to go see in concert, right? And so mm-hmm. observing you at 27 getting into this technology and I'm like I want to see I want to see what you do with this because what you asked it to do is absolutely fascinating to me as a life coach Mm -hmm. so Caleb what did you upload into chat GBT so well I've been working with like AIs for like the last eight months started with mid journey then got into chat GPT and generative responses and there's been many different versions of this this wasn't necessarily the first time that I did it but the first thought I had with AI or chat GPT and, and realizing that it could emulate personalities or or that's how you should you're supposed to prompt right if you need tax advice you go hey you're a tax advisor you do this blah 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 but uh, I just started thinking what what would it take to upload consciousness to then scale your personality for consulting, coaching, whatever courses and your business persona to then run your business for you. So, you know, I I put in there. Um, well, the, the best thing you can. I have several different versions of it, but the first one was like I said, you're a perfect emulator uh, for a personality. And you are going to use the following data points to create a personality and emulate uh, this this person named Caleb Roberts. What the goal is, is to brainstorm business ideas based off of your accomplishments that will be uploaded below to let him know if it's a good idea or a bad idea to move forward with that. And then also, while you're at it, generate 10 different business ideas that can all be launched within the realm of talent that that's being uh, outlined here and then uh how he could do it within three days 
And by the way, this is the business idea that I'm that I'm thinking of. Tell me your opinions based off of the data points I give you. And so then it it does all of that, right? And then it it generates 10 business ideas. Three of those business ideas were ones I've already thought about. So I was like, okay, I'm on track then, right? Like I'm, I'm already thinking with myself. And then I'm like, you know what? Can can it actually create a better version of my accomplishments based off of the accomplishments I gave it? So I was like, how about you make a resume based off of these accomplishments that uh, would fit like a LinkedIn, whatever manager and uh, someone on a, rec a recruiter would want to see it. So then I was like, now use the resume to create the personality. And then now act like Caleb and make a LinkedIn post with this about this story, about this talent that he has. And make a post as if you did create one of those businesses and how you did that. And so it just, it, it gets super meta at that point. Cause you're like third person storytelling something and thinking outside of your own head in terms of like what's possible because you're training a computer on yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's like what I, that was like the baby version of what I discovered. And then I, I went deeper because I started talking to more people about it. And I know that there's a lot more people, but, but yeah, that was like the first iteration. So you took about an hour to upload a bunch of information about yourself into chat GPT. Am I right? Well, I, it was, uh, it takes about an hour to make what I originally had in there. So I already had like a list of accomplishments because I have applied for jobs and I have spoken at events and had to make a bio. So I already kind of like just looked around for it in my Google Drive and I was like, yeah, we'll see what whatever this is. And that's what the first information was, was it took me about an hour to, to make all the stuff that I had, but it took me five minutes to find it and upload it. Okay. So when you talk about accomplishments, a question that popped up in my head is sometimes our accomplishments are based off societal expectations rather than who we actually are. And an example that I give about that is when we go to school, our report card can actually distract us from our talents because we get a report card that says you're good at this and you're bad at that. And the messaging that we're given from teachers and parents is the stuff that you're good at, don't worry about it, but the stuff that you're bad at, put more focus and energy and get better at that. And sometimes we sort of forget what our actual talents are and we start following this line of like getting better at what we're not actually made to be doing. And so we go out and we create these accomplishments that aren't based on who we actually are, but based on what society expects us to do. And even for me in my 20s, there was a while where I wasn't even giving people my age. They say, how old are you? And I go 14. Mm -hmm. And I watched their heads explode because they want to fit me in a box of accomplishments that right. I had by that age. So mm -hmm. when you are talking about your accomplishments, as I say this right now, are there any in your accomplishments that were societal expectations or were they all you practicing your talents? Uh, it was all me practicing my talents. I've, uh, I've, I've owned multiple companies and I go, move across multiple industries. Like I've been on TikTok for since 2019 and I've been in web three crypto uh, since 2021. And I, I had I had agencies in both of those worlds and uh, in AI I've spoken on I've spoken at events or with you know people who make the policies for AI and also with government officials and crypto and NFTs and and so it was more of those things like my own professional the things that I'm proud of um that I think should be taken into account when making my next business decision you know so I wanted to train it off of who I thought that was successful in my own eyes, which was me and the certain things that I had done. And then I also gave like one paragraph that was like, you know, this is how I grew up. I have, I have a son, I'm divorced and uh, I was Mormon, right? So <laughs> I put all those on there. And so then it can, it can like upload like the base personality types or what it assumes about someone with all those traits. <laughs> you go I, I'm a dating and relationship coach you go base personality type based on being divorced and I'm like thinks you're a dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no I I mean that was the point I wanted to see what it would assume about me given a generalized version with a detailed version yeah do you think it got you accurately 
Uh, not not as much as the second time. I think we're like a third of the way there, right? Like I I wanted to separate my business personality. That was the point of it. I didn't want to create my whole personality yet, but I when I went deeper, I actually um, I asked the bot and I was like, hey, what if you were supposed to create a fully fledged personality of a person what are the data points what are 10 sets of data points you would need and so it gave me a form to fill out then I filled it out then I uploaded it and I was like now now make this into a prompt where you can understand it based off of uh, the guidelines given to you or the or the book of how to use chat GPT and uh, and then I uploaded it and then I did it in the back end where the API is uh, where you just you pay for for every generation you you make, and uh, then I created a a, a like a, a more lifelike chatbot of me, where it was like it was like talking to a friend. It was I was like you know here's what I'm thinking. Can you give me this? You know this is what's happening, and it would be like oh man you know that sucks blah blah. I'm so it's, it sounds hard that you're going through that right now, and you know I think you can do it. And and it was and it was like I was talking to like a. a probably like a younger version of myself. And uh, then I was, I like got choked up because I was like, fuck, you know, this is like, <laughs> this is like really cathartic and uh, super nice to be able to, because you, you give yourself advice or you, you always give other people advice that you wish you would actually take and act, and act on. And it finally felt like I was able to see that part of myself and always have access to it instead of, you know, being like, oh, you should have done this. You know, it was it was more like a positive outlook on it. And uh, it was nice to, I don't know, feel feel heard by someone that you because you go after people you like or people or things that you want in other people. And uh, you can kind of like create that and uh, have an ideal version of yourself that you're coaching yourself on being too, if you wanted to. So, you know, that was really nice. Do you think chat GPT is helping you become a better person? I think, I mean, I don't know. I think it, the way I'm using it is, yeah. I, in general, like, it's all, it's it's like, how are you using a knife? You know, are you cutting food up with it? Are you uh, you building tool other tools with it? Or are you stabbing people, right? It's like, <laughs> um, good point. This is no. That's, I mean, yeah, I feel like it's making my life better. It's making my life a lot easier and I'm having more time to focus on things that I want to. Um, but objectively, I don't, I think I'm making myself a better person by using it for that goal. Right. It's interesting how you say you are entering the prompts. I'm, I'm really paying attention to what it is that you're saying to it. Because something that I like, I, I got a lot of isms. You're going to notice this. <laughs> mm -hmm. But something yeah. that I is, Life begins when you ask the right question. And it's a conversation with chat GPT. I, think, I don't think like people who aren't really versed in this technology as it's emerging, I'm, I'm watching a lot about this. And what I'm seeing a lot is that people are conversing with it. Mm -hmm. And it's like the way you were talking to it as though you're talking to a person who is going to help you in whatever it is that you want, but it's a conversation. It's a conversation and you have to ask the right questions in order to get that particular outcome that you're going to. Even uh, there was somebody who um, was talking about how you can create prompts for work and, right. and sort of like, like things that you'll do repetitively for your job. I, I can't think of the exact example right now, but something that for your work over and over again, you're going to be kind of branching the same thing but with different people and so she basically created the system to get it to understand what it was that she wanted and then she said now tell me what it is I need to ask you the next time I want this exact same outcome so that I don't have to go through the whole yeah. just give me what I'm going to copy and paste and ask you to get me this and it's so fascinating how this can help businesses mm -hmm. and you know one of the books that i read is called custom i wrote 10 books and three workbooks. books right? <laughs> yeah so 
one of the books that I read is called Custom Made, and it's about understanding what your talent is and then monetizing it. Mm -hmm. And this is the next evolution of work now. It's us going fuck you to corporations and building our own businesses. And as a dating and relationship coach, one thing that I understand is your happiness creates happiness in the relationship. Your fulfillment creates fulfillment in the relationship because we can't look at our partners and say, you have to be everything for me. You cannot like, it's so unhealthy to say, you have to be my source of fulfillment. You have to be my source of happiness. I need to get that outside of the relationship because it's a part of me, not a part of us. There's a contribution that we'll make to each other. But part of my contribution is the happiness and satisfaction I create within myself that's independent of you, that I bring to the relationship, enhancing the dynamic between us, enhance, enhancing those conversations too. But if I'm unf unfulfilled outside the relationship, that's the vibe that I bring home. And then I have to bring it up, you know, somehow with you. So it's, it's really great for us to be satisfied in our work. And that's part of why I'm so curious about your journey, because here I am at 50 and I've got people who follow me between the ages of like 14 to 70 something. I've got everybody and I want to learn from you. I want to see how you apply this, but I want to let other people see how you apply this too. And just this, this journey that you bring us on this conversation that we're having right now, I am so grateful that you're willing to do this with me, by the way. Um, love your haircut and beard. I've been watching your TikToks and I love the upgrade, Caleb. I'm just going to say. You. <laughs> Thank you. So, so when you say chat GPT makes your life easier, easier how? So, um, well, I mean, I've used it anywhere from, for, I've used it for dating advice, relationship advice. I've used it for, um, automating tasks, doing research. I've used it with three different companies um, in, in doing consulting for them. For marketing, I, I mean, that's how I make the base marketing plan for any company that uh, has me consult with them is I usually go through that and then I just tweak it because everyone kind of needs the same thing. It's just which one do you go more into detail of? And uh, I've used it for seo on five different websites and i don't know seo but i do know the basics of it and what needs to be done i just didn't have the contractors or the people or the service providers to do it for me so i've done that i've i've created i have this whole website that i haven't launched yet called microdose.education where i built out a blog on there i i wrote a book on there uh and it's like a 40 page book on how to microdose along with uh and I brainstormed the name of the business. I created all the logos and the images for the website using Midjourney. And uh, I created the bio for myself, all the copy for it. I wrote down, I, I did all the research for the website on it, where I put research papers on there and links. And uh, then I asked it how I would market it. So like it, I had an AI as a test, create the whole, a whole business for me from start to finish. And that's how I've like tested it in the meantime. And then before that, I mean, I even, I was like, well, you could get degrees with this. And I found, I mean, I didn't do this, but I, I know a way to, to get like a degree in a month by doing some like random theoretical research on it. And, uh, and then I also got a job with it. I started applying for jobs and I don't work there anymore, but it was like, you know, maybe I could automate everything with an AI. And when uh the, the way it worked was they're like well tell us uh, or, or give us like a pitch on how you would run our marketing department and i and then i was like oh here we go we got to work for a few hours on creating this marketing plan and then i generate it within 10 minutes with a little bit of tweaks here and there and i'm like you know what i have so much extra time i'm just going to put it into a slideshow and make it look all pretty how about you format this into a slideshow and then i copy and pasted it and then i put it in there and uh then i presented it and they're like this is amazing you know this is what we're going to use for the next year and uh, I, I i i'd done it in front of the ceo and like their whole marketing team and sales department and and it was like something i made in an hour uh just for fun you know i was like whatever i don't care if i get this or not and then and then i ended up having and, and then i told the people at the i was like i, I used ai for this and they're like, well, you got to teach us how to do it. And then I started training people using AI and, you know, creating courses or 
curriculums or analyzations. I even upload arguments that I have over text or like whatever, you know, like disagreements I have with people because I, I, I try and, you know, fix myself and I, you know, I've been to therapy and, and I want to know if I'm wrong or not. And I'm very like logical and analytical. So I uploaded the whole conversation. I was like, tell me which person was using logical fallacies and was manipulating the other person. And then it would great. And it was like, you both are. <laughs> and then I was like, well, what did I do wrong? And, and then it was telling me exactly what I was doing. So it's, it's like become like a, a way of living my life. It's just like everything I do is always it's like when we learned about google and you're like well just ask google you know well just just like see if chat gpd can can do something about it i love that i love the fact that you said you asked a dating and relationship questions you challenge accepted okay because this is what went through my head <laughs> this is what went through my head i want to know what you asked i want to answer the questions and i want to see how you compare our answers do you want to do that Oh, yeah, 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 I can do that. All right, yeah, throw, I, I, throw, throw one at me. So I, uh, let's see, what did I ask? I said, uh, how, oh, how would I get more opportunities to come across smart business women who are accomplished and I think I said a certain personality type. I was like, well, what would you do in this situation to come across more women like this? Mm hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> obviously you have to go to business places if you want to meet business women. Could you tell us specifically what kind of business you wanted them to be in or any anything like that? No, it was just uh, I, I think I said like upper middle class. It's uh, upper middle class and like a higher IQ than average. And the main point was I was trying to I, I was trying to like quantify the ideal woman that I want, which is someone who's smart accomplished and isn't like code like they're they've lived their life and they're not waiting they're, they're okay waiting for a man to come by you know and they're not reliant on a relationship okay so my brain says you have to go where they are oh uh, there's 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 obviously different options there's the online option there's the in-person option so online you have to create a really kick-ass bio it has to speak directly to the heart of the person that you're looking for i always suggest that the first picture be a picture of you doing something you want to be doing with the person you want to be with so that you trigger that familiarity concept and then when you write your bio you want to write something that incites a smile the reason why is because when these muscles crinkle up on the corner of your eyes that releases dopamine in your brain because that's the signal that something pleasant happened now when your brain releases dopamine there's an association when i pay attention to this person i feel rewarded and so it's a ninja mind trick to create a, a reward sensation when somebody is looking at your profile to incite them to then connect with you. So that would be my online advice. Also to reach out to women who seem to appear to be the type of woman you're looking for. Make sure you read their bio. Make sure you say something about them that pertains to their bio to let them know you did more than just look at a picture and connect really speaking to her personality and getting into her brain because hey and if you make her laugh bonus because let me tell you when i'm talking to women and i'm live streaming and and i got guys coming out going oh you know you have to be six feet tall make lots of money and be super hot and i'm like ladies what's hotter what's hotter super hot or funny and you can see it funny 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 so make us laugh now if you're going to do the in-person thing you want to go to where they are, right? So you got to go to the kind of stores that they're in. You got to go in the places they're in, the activities that they go to, yoga, the sort of bars that they go to, bookstores that they go to, those kinds of things. You want to make them laugh. Your first interaction should make them laugh because I'll tell you, I've been in bars and guys come up and they're like, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, Ugh, go away. Because the first thing they did was demand something from me. If a guy goes by and he goes, just want to say you look really good tonight, and he keeps walking, I'm like, <laughs> that was, I, I like that. You didn't piss me off. But if you come up to me and the first thing you do makes me laugh, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to, like, give me more because you just gave me so much pleasure. Mm, yeah. So I mean, what, did, what did the AI tell you to do? The AI gave me basic advice. And I specifically... 
don't like dating apps because <laughs> I know I'm better in person. So it was asking uh, um, how to come across more people in person like that. But it was like, it was, yeah, it was like, go to places where they're hanging out. And um, it was the main problem with the emulation part of personalities is it's giving you the most generalized and not specialized like that's that's what it takes to get the real advice that you need is uh it'll it'll just act like anyone on TV or any basic book it's it's just general knowledge it's common knowledge what your mom would tell you it's what your dad would tell you and uh it's probably going to be a little bit better uh by saying like you know you're a dating coach with 20 years of experience and you're trying to help out you're you specialize in helping out entrepreneurs and blah blah it'll It'll source it from all these entrepreneur books and networking books and like just put the summaries together. But I think, you know, you gave better advice for sure. Um, Cause yeah. you, cause you can, there's uh it doesn't understand time and, and weaving and intuition when it comes to the, that's what a human can always detect. Right. Especially facial expressions too. You, you know, when I say certain words or or how to how I feel or how confident I am based off of how I say it rather than typing it out, you know. So so I think that's that's where it has to make up for because yeah, in, in a real IRL person, you know, doing a dating advice thing is way better. And you gave multiple solutions because it does that too, where it'll it'll go like, I don't understand completely what you're trying to say. So I'm going to like cover all my bases, but in the most generalized way possible. Um, and you did it based off of my reaction and how much I was interested in what you were talking about. So, yeah. So here's something for you to ask AI that can help you in your dating experience. Well, your, your pickup experience. Mm -hmm. So, it has, would you say that it has saved the personality information that you told it about yourself? No, not necessarily. Oh, yeah. yeah, go on. You would have to start from zero for what I'm going to tell you to do. Yeah. So what I would, this, this is, this, do this, not do this, it's up to you, but this is my idea. Input yourself into chat GPT and then say, Based on who I am, what would be some funny pickup lines I can use when I meet women who are, and then the description that you gave me that you're looking for? This is really interesting. Do you have one right? Would you? I, you right I, now? Know. I need to know what it's going to yeah, tell I you. I can do that right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> you're laughing already. Uh, I think it came up with some good responses. Okay, so here's what I said. Based off of the information below, what are some good pickup lines that Caleb could say to attract women who are 30 and up, single, travel a lot, are confident and above average in attractiveness, and have a high emo emotional intelligence with the goal of making the woman laugh and start a conversation that fits the tone of Caleb's personality. And I put my personal information, which is, and I guess if anyone else wants to try this, uh, I put, I, I did a 16 personalities test and then I put that in there. So it gets a base personality. Yeah. And then uh, you go into detail about the three most influential moments of your life. You put down your five most held values or beliefs. You put three interests or hobbies. And then you explain your social network, your communication style, and uh, emotional intelligence, and then your professional accomplishments. So that's what I do in my per creating my personality. So here are some of the pickup lines that Caleb could use to attract women who fit the description provided based on his person personal information and personality traits. Are you into philosophy? Because I've been searching for the meaning of life, and I think it might just be you. I love exploring new ideas and experiences. And there's something about you that makes me want to embark on a journey of the heart. <laughs> I know. I, that was one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, as a digital marketer, I know a good connection when I see one. And I must say our chemistry is off the charts. 
<laughs> yeah, take it to a burning man festival because i feel an instant connection and the desire to dive into a world of adventure with you do you believe in reality creation because ever since i met you, you my reality has become a whole lot brighter i'm always up for traveling but i never thought i'd find someone who could make me go on an emotional journey just by being in their presence i may be skilled at problem solving but the only problem i can't seem to crack is how i can't stop thinking about you i'm not <laughs> straight <laughs> <laughs> I'm no stranger to personal growth, but I must admit, you've given me some new perspective on what it means to be truly captivated by someone. I've learned a lot about emotional intelligence, but and I can't help but notice that our emotional wavelengths seem to be in perfect harmony. As someone who's always up for a phone call or in-phone, in-person conversation, I can't help but feel like we could talk for hours and stuff, so much left to say. And uh, then I picked out my favorites, which were which were uh two six eight and ten which was i love exploring new ideas blah blah, blah. and i was like now make them varying links make them more diverse create more creative types of pickup lines and vary the links of of the pickup line and uh vary in your humor yeah so then it generated 10 more and it said uh are you a daring expedition? Because I'm ready to pack my bags and dive headfirst into the uncharted territory of the heart. It must be a best-selling novel because every time I'm around you, I find myself lost in the captivating story of us. Mm -hmm. If life were an art gallery, you'd be a masterpiece that I could spend hours admiring and never grow tired of. Is your heart a hidden treasure? Because I feel like I've been searching for it my whole life and now I found it. I'll never let it go. Do you have a map? Because I keep getting lost in the endless possibilities of our future together. You must be a scenic route because the journey of getting to know you is far more enchanting than any generate destination. Um, are you and and it keeps it it just keeps on going. So then I think what the best thing to do is like, I mean, at this point, I think what the main problem is when you chat with with Chat GPT, everyone assumes it's always right, but it's never right the first time. Right, and you just craft it. So now, I mean, I have probably like five solid ones that I like, right? Even though it gave me 20. Right. Um, but then I, I'm also finding out what my style of pickup line is by not ever having trying it. <laughs> so can we add a variation here? Can I yeah. try to tw tweak this with you? Yeah, I wanted you to. Yeah. So let's say uh, now take the above information, but give me pickup lines that are dry British wit. And make it specific to a grocery store, picking up in a grocery store. Okay. I'll take, take the information. Okay. Style. Dry British. Wait. Let's use, can we use wit instead of humor? Because I, I want to see if it'll understand the word witty. I would say wit and banter. Wit and banter and make the location, make it specific to uh, the location being a grocery store. Easily. Using, using the environment as inspiration. Is this the produce aisle or have I stumbled upon the Garden of Eden? Because you look like you could tempt anyone with your charm. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, do you do you come with a nutritional label? Because I'm sure you're packed with all the essential ingredients for a heartwarming connection. That made us so much better. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you a shopping cart? Because I can't help but feel like we're destined to stroll down the aisles of life together. I must be in the bakery section because you're quite the sweet treat. I wouldn't mind indulging in. Do you have a recipe? For I gotta say, any males listening to this, do not use that last one. <laughs> <laughs> not, because that that's like creepy grandpa right there. Like, yeah, that is. That was uh, that was very forward. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a recipe for love? Because I've got the ingredients, and I think we could cook up something special together. I was looking for a tea to match my dry British wit, but I found something even better, a delightful conversation with you. I come to the store for groceries, but I didn't expect to find the most enticing item on my list, a charming encounter with you. 
You must be a rare imported delicacy because your presence adds an exquisite flavor to the otherwise ordinary grocery store. That was, <laughs> yeah. Number one, number two, that one so far, those are winners. Are you a can of soup? Because you've got me feeling all warm and cozy inside and I can't wait to savor our conversation. I hope you don't mind if I check out the contents of your cart. After all, they say you can learn a lot about someone by their shopping choices. That's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. different and it's, it's, oh yeah, yeah. And we like different because it, it kind of it makes us think for a second. Pattern interrupt for sure. You know, that's definitely how I look at dating in general. I, well, I, I come from a background of actually launching OnlyFans models and um, learned a lot from recruiting models and helping and helping them and just talking to sex workers and uh, just just, you know, the whatever the, the most societally attractive women. And it was always that it was always like, how do you prove that you're different than literally every other guy who's only trying to fuck them? And uh, how do you prove that you're smarter and that you're going to be a long term part of their life and that you're not just there because they lured you in with their with their beauty, you know, and you assume everyone assumes a sex worker is more willing to have sex, but usually they're more romantic about sex. I mean, they can have like sex, but they're usually more intimate about. It. And so I, le I learned a lot about that, too. It's, it's mostly about pattern interrupts when talking to any woman because that's i don't think it really i mean i also lived in miami which is like i mean sexual tension city over there oh my god <laughs> and uh you see how just men just are on it all the time They're like let's let's go i'm here to play <laughs> they have no they have no shame in it but uh yeah yeah 24 7 fertility cycle 24 7 fertility cycle is that what that's that's what you are that's, that's what i am yes what does that mean it means you're eager ah okay hey right? 24 7 fertility cycle we have a two three day fertility cycle because like you you, you said you know miami is like sexually charged and then you pointed to the guys and it's like, yeah, 24 7 fertility cycle, wherever y'all land, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot different when I got to, I've never really dated before. I, I got married right after, or right, but, I mean, right as I basically moved out of my parents. Yeah. I'm and so, yeah, I mean, I, I went on a Mormon mission and then I came back two years later. And then I, my, my girlfriend who was like this girl I met in high school waited for me those two years and we immediately got married. And then uh, we're married for four years. And then I come out to the real world, not Mormon anymore. And then I'm like, what is all of this? This is crazy <laughs> compared to marriage. Marriage is so much easier compared to the, the hunt for red october of dating my god it's uh it's 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 a big learning curve for sure it's a jungle out there it is a jungle out there <laughs> so i might kind of blow your mind a little bit with this one if you don't know anything about what i tend to talk about but my dating advice is a no kissing for three months dating rule so no kissing no that. sex no sleepovers no exclusivity and just use those first three months as like a vetting process. So I don't know if you're right for me or not until I get an idea of what your patterns are. And I won't know what your patterns are until I've given you some time to show me who you are. And not just the facade or best behavior syndrome that we all get into in the beginning because we're just flush with like an increase of natural chemicals like dopamine and serotonin reward and happiness. That just happens. Mother Nature does that in order to increase the chances of procreation because we are creatures designed to procreate. I divide us into three parts, a biological body, logical mind, spiritual connections. When you think about a friend and a minute later, you get a text message or a phone call, that's that spiritual connection, not needing to be in the same room in order to communicate. And so, you know, you do kind of go into this altered state, whether you like it or not, and you're on sort of your best version. And then the chemicals die off as they will. And now you are yourself and that hangry, Ness comes right because uh, yeah, yeah. 
he wasn't appearing here. Like you would sleep less and not feel tired when you're in this high state. But when you're natural, when you're tired or grumpy, when you're hungry, you're grumpy. And before I have that cup of coffee, right? Like that's starting to appear here. It wasn't there. So I need to know this part of you before I decide whether or not to have a relationship. Wow. Yeah, well, I saw that at first on your profile. And then I was like, that seems a bit excessive. But now it sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's, it's about the data, Caleb. Are I think, you gonna... oh, that's why it makes more sense to me. It's almost like you're artificially going through the honeymoon phase and then forcing the tension to come up by, you know, waiting that long. Because, yeah. you know, it's it's all a play for connection. Yeah. But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, you know, the question is, do I want to get the data about you after I get emotions or right. before I get emotions? Exactly. No, I do like that. And I now that I think about it, I think I inherently already do that. You know, it's it's always in Miami. It was always going out with guys and, you know, I would have, I had a lot of friends who were, I had a lot of models who were girls or who were friends of mine that would, you know, we would come hang out at my place. And I was like, no one is the guy that would have hot women around him, but would, it was like just good conversation, you know, like that was the point. And then when we would go out to clubs and bars, like I would go out with my friends, my, my guy friends, like, are you going to fuck her tonight? Yo, bro, what are you going to do? Are you going to fuck her, bro? And they wanted to like hype. They wanted to like get a taste of what my possibility was. And I was like, I remember one night one guy was like, what, why, why aren't you like, fuck it, Caleb, why aren't you like grinding or, or doing that? And I was like, just because we can tell someone wants to fuck doesn't mean we have to fuck, you know, just because there's an opportunity doesn't mean I have to take it just because just, that shows desperation. And he's like, oh man, I've never, I've never thought about it. <laughs> It was like that. He like had a mind blowing moment because he was in the, you know, starving, you know, hangry. He's like, ah, oh, man, I just need something. I need to I need to live through Caleb now and talk to him about it. But I've never thought that I have the choice and who I can or can't fuck. Right. It's always. Can I even be good enough to do it? Which has a lot to do with confidence. And I mean, I love talking about relationships and date. I love reading those books, too, about because I think the it makes a lot of sense. I think how we treat our relationships has a lot to do with business too. And, uh, and our, every, every aspect of our life, it like bleeds into. Yeah. Well, one, like I, I tell women, you know, using that no kissing for three months data role means you are practicing patience and impulse control and making an informed decision to who's going to get your exclusivity. Successful mm. men practice patience and impulse control and make informed decisions. So when you use this methodology in your romantic dating life, you're more likely to attract that kind of man because you're speaking his language. Mm. Oh, dang, dang, dang. Love this. Yes. <laughs> Before we go, I have one more question for you. I want to swing it back to you inputting your information into chat GPT and then saying, based on who I am, what should I be doing? So what were the business ideas it gave you? Oh, let me see. I can show you. I can show you real quick. There you go. Okay. So it gave me a psychedelic microdosing course, TikTok marketing masterclass, AI and marketing course, NFT and Web3 consulting platform, and psychedelic retreat booking portal. And these are all the industries I'm involved in. And uh, and I'm all all those things are already have been done. So TikTok, I've I've made a TikTok class before. I, I was uh probably one of the first TikTok consultants and I owned the first TikTok ad agency. So I do have that. It's just kind of like private right now. And then I already made a psychedelic microdosing course with the book. And then uh AI and marketing course is one that I've been recording. And then an F NFT and Web3 consulting platform is one that I'm partnered with a startup on. 
And then a psychedelic retreat booking platform is one that I've been looking into because I run, uh, I help run the marketing for a psychedelic retreats company, ketamine retreat company. Yeah. And uh, so it was like, I was like, oh, I'm on the right direction. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it thinks like, like exactly how I'm thinking. Because I didn't tell it any of those things beforehand. It assumed that based off of the amount of talent I had, because I did it by section. I was like, here's AI, here's Web3, here's psychedelics, here's TikTok marketing. And it, and then I just, you know, I would put like five to 10 points in each one, depending on which one I was most experienced at. So it was going based off of most experience and putting them together. Um, and then I asked it for a 10 step launch plan for each of those business ideas where I could do that within a weekend and what the marketing would who who the ideal demographic would be so like as an example for the did okay so the consultation platform would be ideal demographic is artists entrepreneurs collectors business owners and people aged 20 to 45 the platforms they're mostly on is Twitter, Discord, Clubhouse, and crypto-related forums or podcasts. The 10-step plan would be define the range of consultation services offered, create an online platform for scheduling and hosting consultations, set up a payment processing platform, and then it goes into how to create the pricing for everything. So it's like I have five brains like going for me at the same time If if you make it fragment more and more into, okay, now for each five of those businesses... Uh, brainstorm some names for each for the, each of the courses and the websites and tell me what domains are available. What is the best platform to build it on to get to to build it? Um, and what's the code to then design it? What are some colors that I should be? You know, it's it's everything. Yeah, this is so fascinating. So based on the information that you got, is there anything in there that you're going to be pursuing? Like uh, the advice of AI, just just doing it by the letter. Um, doing by the, I would probably do. Yeah, my microdosing book, and uh, I followed like I didn't. I, it's not word for word that I'm doing it. I I am actually yeah. No, I'm I'm creating a course right now for how to prompt engineer, just how to think about how to prompt, think creatively about how to create prompts and uh, use it for business owners that's that's the one that i am following the most for right now because i see it benefiting people who are watching what i do the most right now um but i'm working on some things in the background that are like longer term stuff but for immediate things it's going to be my book and just a little course but yeah i don't know I don't have any deadlines. I'm just kind of like, you know, flowing with it. Yeah. I know. Seriously. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, that's the way I like to live. It's called hedonism. And I love hedonism yeah. right? where you can like set yourself up where you can be yourself and be comfortably yourself. And I really do. I, I love the idea that we're kind of coming into, again, this generation of people who are saying fuck you to corporations we're making our own our own way we're making our own schedules we're making our own jobs we're seeing we don't have to grind for so little we can really work less but create more for ourselves and i think artificial intelligence is paving the way for this and i really think there's going to be sort of like a sweet spot between all of these opportunities being available to us at very little cost so that many, many people can take advantage of it. And then this being kind of shut down. I think there's going to be a point where we, the people, the general, the masses aren't going to have this access the way we have it right now. And mm -hmm. I think now is a really great time where the internet hasn't been, you know, boxed in in order to box us in. We have every possibility in the world. And I think a lot of us should be taking advantage of this. Yeah, I think to to like completely agree with what you're saying, the whole reason, the whole basis of what I know now and why I'm in crypto is because I was in the ungated world of YouTube before when you could look at porn on YouTube, before there was YouTube kids, before there was full time YouTube content creators. I was I was watching it on my iPod touch at like 10 years old. And I remember being the first one early to Netflix whenever it was like barely even an app. 
And uh, I remember jailbreaking my iPad and then going on the deep web, you know, and those were like pivotal moments as like a preteen that like shaped the rest of my life because I had access to like ungated information that my parents didn't know I was able to access because I was, and I just didn't know any better. Right. Like I was like, Oh, well, you know, I just know where to find this answer, you know? And I think that's exactly where we're at with AI right now. The, yeah. the kids right now, uh, we, we, they can think creative, like Gen Z before Gen Z, you know, the, whatever that generation is, the ones growing up right now, who are going to be in college in the next few years, they have been raised on TikTok and they know how to access the information way faster than either you or I do. And they know how to hop on trends faster. They know how to make content faster and they know how to get past social interactions digitally faster than we do. And the things that they're learning now with AI, with unlimited time and unlimited resources, (laughs) they have all the time in the world to do the study that we wish we could have the time for. And uh, it's going to raise like a whole generation, I think, and and change the way that we think and in their whole generation. I like this. Caleb, let's let's touch base again in about 30 days. What do you think? Sounds good. Yeah. I would love to do that. This year, you're so interesting. You're so diverse. And and oh, I love what you're I love what we're talking about. Final question. For people who are listening to this, who are like, wow, like this sounds so interesting and I want to start, what are like some starter websites that they should be going to in order to start getting like it? Chat GPT would be one. Yeah, Chat GPT. I think uh, what's another good one is prompt base. Prompt okay. base is where people sell prompts um, on a marketplace and you can see what people are generating on there. And they have prompts for, for chat gpt mid journey dolly all all sorts of ais but i think just browsing through that it's kind of like going on fiverr and you're like wait what people do that people are selling that and it'll show you previews of what people are generating and that's that's the best way of seeing the capabilities of ai right now i think at, from like a super basic user perspective without like having to do a lot of research that will think you that they'll teach you to think creatively about what's possible and then test it out you, you'll see a, an idea and you go Hey, ChatGPT, can you do this? And then you're like, whoa, you know, it's because <laughs> the hardest part is finding the first idea. So if you get a little bit of inspiration, I think that's like the best like starting points is ChatGPT and prompt base. I love this. When we come back together in 30 days, I'd love it if you brought me questions that you want me to answer for you. Oh, yeah. About anything. Okay. Do you have a couple books if you're interested? in reading my stuff i wrote a couple books for men i have a dating book for men called the perfect play and i have a relationship book for men called fix that shit by the way the women's is called fix that shit too but the women's dating book is called <laughs> castles let me see that's it let me make sure i found the right one jc it's on Amazon, right? Yeah. Do you have like audibles of it too? No. I have two audiobooks, but my my books for men aren't audiobooks yet. Okay. But the face that shit for women is an audiobook. Are you an Amazon? Oh, you found? Learn how to earn her yeah that's all right okay yeah okay got it (laughs) sound of the perfect play well thank you caleb thank you (laughs) so use that link that i gave you book another session whenever Mm -hmm. you want to to be honest i said 30 days but if you think we can have a a really good enriching conversation sooner i'm in Okay, I'm down. (laughs) Hey, Caleb, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon again, my friend. Okay, see ya. Bye.